My name is uh, Muhammad Noor, and I'm a Rohingya myself. My family been forced to flee Myanmar in the 70s, and uh, we ended up in Arabian Peninsula. If I may go to the next slide. Yes, so uh, just to give you an idea what we're going to talk about and uh, how it, we're going to lay out the next 20 minutes. Uh, this is Burma. On, on, on one side we have China, Laos, Thailand, Bangladesh and India. That is Burma. And this is where we are, Arakan. Arakan is a, a word, Persian word, which is mean uh, Rukun. Rukun is the pillar. And Arakan is the plural of the pillar. And which actually the name itself tells the civilization of Rukun. So Burmese government now trying to change it to Rakhine State. So Arakan is the original word, which is still sticking to it, because Arakan means something to us and to the land. So this is where we are, and this is a brief uh, history from, 90, uh, from 788. It's very simple. The advent of Islam in Arakan was in 788, and then all the chronological order of the, of the event so being uh, basically Rohingya are the, the descendant inhabitant of Arakan Burma and genealogically of course we are the Indian uh, Indo Aryan uh, people and all, all from the beginning all the way so I'm just going to quickly jump in 1954 which is the before independence so before that the British rule so we Rohingya were there long before the British and after the British as well so during the uh, independence of Burma, we were equally citizen of all the rest of the Burma. And in 1962, we have been declared as an ethnic minority of Arakan, Burma. But later on, when uh, dictator General Newe took over to uh, the Burmese uh, government, became militarized, then they started political exclusion, that Rohingya cannot be an MP, Rohingya cannot participate in police, Rohingya cannot be part of the military, and politically dis uh, 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 disfranchising us all the way. So the systematic genocide has actually started from 1962, that was the first milestone, and on the way, going all the way. So there are major 5 to 10 exodus in every 5 to 10 years. So today, uh, and coming all the way to the uh, 2012, the last eruption, which uh, massacred many and many thousands of people, and from there. So now, uh, these are basic brief history, and what type of tools they use. These are the tools, genocidal tools they are using. Number one, of course, denying the citizenship that we have, and of course, forced displacement, so that Rohingya cannot stay in one locality, in one place and uh, population control, people are not allowed to marry, people are not allowed to have children and birth, etc. Uh, marriage restriction, a couple cannot get married until they have been, uh, they get uh, not only marriage certificate, but also permission. So the permission take from uh, or six months to one year to three years to four years. If you do it in between, uh, you're not taking the permission from the Burmese government, you'll be jailed for 10 years, 15 years, sometime lifetime. This are the things that we've been talking before 2012 to everyone, but nobody believes that this, such a thing happened in today's uh, in, 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 in this modern world. But in 2012, they have miscalculated us uh, as a Rohingya. We managed to reach out to the world to tell our side of the story, to tell how they've been persecuted. Of course, there's just this is just to name a few: grabbing of the land, political exclusion, arbitrary detention and so on. So, uh, if we can go to the next slide. Yeah. So, this, this is a bit uh, uh, animated kind of thing. So now, after having all this problem, I call it Rohingya have boxes of problems. So I'm just going to open two boxes here today. There's so many problems that we have. One is the identity. We are stateless people. The, 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 the same state, the same land that used to be our grand ancestral land, we have been disowned, we have been pushed, we have been kicked around, so we became a stateless people. This is one of the major problems we have. Now, then we have identity crisis. No Rohingya has an identity. 
they cannot prove themselves who they are. They don't have birth certificate, they don't have an ID, they don't have a passport. Nothing in sought to prove themselves who they are. So this is another box of problems. And then we have healthcare. No Rohingya is allowed to go to hospitals in Burma. Not only in Burma, even outside. Why? Not because, out, like for example, countries like uh, Thailand, Malaysia, because they don't have identity, so they become refugees. They are not documented refugees. So getting access to the healthcare is a project by itself. You gotta need to know someone and you need to have some sort of document just to get there. Social services. Rohingya are deprived from social services for the last 60, 70 years. So many, they cannot participate in the event, they cannot do this, they cannot do that. I will not go into it because I'm sure you know migration. This is, Rohingya has not seen migration at all. People move from one country to another. We just sneak to another country. We've been a forced labor. We've been my, uh, put it in a boat, in a trunk of a car, and we've been smuggled, traded like a commodity. This is who we are. There's no such thing in migration when it comes to the Rohingya. And of course, uh, land properties, we cannot own properties, we cannot have a place, we cannot, we, can, we basically cannot own anything. In many countries, we cannot even own a, a SIM card or a phone because of the legal issues. And of course, uh, the education, the most important one. Rohingya today, if we talk about from 1942 all the way to 2019, today hardly we can say even 1% of the Rohingya is educated. Because there are about 4 million people in, in the Rohingya community worldwide. If 1% of the Rohingya has been educated, we are talking about 40,000 people who can read and write. Today, unfortunately, we don't have 40,000 people also who can read and write. So the, the government has successfully carried out more than genocide, more than, more than uh, ethnic cleansing, more than anything else because this nation, this, uh, this tiny minority have destroyed everything. We do not have infrastructure, we do not have education, we do not have healthcare, we do not have anything at all. The only thing we have or certificate we got from the United Nations is we are the most persecuted people. And we are the most marginalized people. These are the certificates. These are the things that, uh, unfortunately, we have. So now, financial services. So I'm going to go into these two boxes today. We do not have financial services zero. The Rohingya cannot open up a bank account. The Rohingya cannot receive money. The Rohingya cannot send money. The Rohingya basically are on cash. Everything is on the table. I call it the dark economy. We have been forced to be in the part of dark economy. This is who we are, unfortunately. This is how the whole Burmese government, and not only Burmese government is persecuting us inside Burma, but outside Burma. Once you don't have identity, you are not allowed to have a bank account. And even though you earn some money, you, 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 you are not allowed to do any saving in the bank account. You are prone to uh, theft, robbery, anything like that. So, so now, uh, before we go into this, and then identity. So of course I've talked about identity. So there are many boxes, and, and many boxes there are more. I'm just just to name a few. Each box needs study. Each box needs collaboration. Each box needs many type of uh, way to solve this problem. So Rohingya is left with massive problems. If we, if 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 Rohingyas are given citizenship today, we need another hundred years to rebuild whatever destroyed. So it is, and, and, and just to, before we uh, go in, we have a report yes, uh, saying uh, many, many other uh, atrocities, and of course we, we have it on the table about Rohingya Vision, which is uh, considered the world first Rohingya TV channel where we broadcast on daily and all this. So I would like to quickly go to the next one. So uh, this is just a basic uh, uh, introduction of me, who am I? Mohammed, I'm uh, uh, currently had a couple of projects. One is called the Rohingya Project, which I'm going to present. Rohingya Vision is the world uh, Rohingya first television channel that broadcasts all over the internet on multiple languages to communicate uh, our side of the story. And uh, Rohingya Alphabet Digitization, which is we have Rohingya have our own manuscript, the way Japanese is written, the way any other written language is written. So I'm working on a project to digitize this and we have managed to not only digitize it, it has been unicoded. So today, Rohingya language exists in smartphones, 
from last year, as you recall it. So I always say, Burmese want to erase our name, the generals and military want to erase our name. Now we exist in their pockets, in their smartphones, in their Androids and iOS. So this is the this is the project of digitization. And of course, there's something called Rohingya Football Club, which I'm heading. This is considered a national football team. We want to play against other nations. We have been accepted into a, a called, uh, the Refugee World Cup. And uh, the last thing is uh, uh, I have written a book. It's called The Bonkers Struggle. It's on Amazon. And also, maybe we can go to the next one. Uh, so this is quickly, uh, we're talking about there are about 2.5 billion people who in, uh, uh, globally who are uh, financially excluded from the financial uh, framework. Uh, of course, uh, today, I mean, when I say financial uh, exclusion, we're talking about capital, credit, transactions, insurance, services, investment, and all those. So from there, we are basically there are about uh, 12 million stateless people around the world based on UN uh, finding. So from there, 4 million is only Rohingya. So we are the majority within the stateless people. Maybe we can go to the next one. So today, uh, this is uh, the demography of Rohingya, where Rohingya have been forced to flee for the last 60 to 70 years. We're talking about three more than 300,000 people in, in, in Saudi Arabia, in UAE, which is Dubai, and Pakistan and India. Bangladesh is now hosting more than 1.3 million people, uh, uh, which is just uh, in eight, uh, 2017 alone, more than 700,000 people have been forced there. And Thailand and Indonesia and Malaysia. Uh, if you can really uh, look at it here, uh, we did not put the figure, uh, the people in Burma, because uh, of course we've been displaced, but we do not consider them displaced because they are still in our land. So there about we're talking about another 500 to 700,000 people still remaining. So majority of us is being driven out. Because, so uh, now we've been discussing the problem. Everyone is discussing about the problem. So there are many boxes I have shown and many uh, ways that people can uh, solve this problem. So today I'm here not to talk only the problems, but I'm here to talk about the solution as well. So what is the solution? Of course, uh, getting our land back, get, we getting back our citizenship, getting uh, everything that has been deprived, it is the solution, it is our ultimate solution. But the question is, for the last 70 years, did we manage to achieve? Did we do it? So what could be the alternative solution? This is where the Rohingya project comes in. What we are trying to do, this is an ecosystem that we are trying to build. Rohingya project is divided into three main sections. One is identity. Financial inclusion and social upliftment. What is identity? We are talking about because if you want to open up a bank account or maybe send and receive money or do an online transaction, which is the most important and crucial thing, if you can financially uh, you know, include people, then you are uplifting someone. Then, then he can decide whether which school he is to someone to go, which uh, uh, places uh, he want to get treatment. So we cannot wait until the Burmese government give us an identity. We have waited 70 years. They have destroyed and everything. So what we are trying to do here, trying to build a digital identity using blockchain technology. This is what we are trying to achieve here. Blockchain is a decentralized, uh, 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 I mean, decentralized and transparent and, and, and uh, secure way of securing some data and using this digital identity and include them financially using e-wallet, commerce, and so on. So what is the social upliftment means? Of course, we can bring best of the technology, but we are talking about a marginalized community uh, who have uh, you know, lower in education. So we need many types of training to get these things done into the, into the framework. Uh, so these are uh, the, the three things. One is the self-sovereign identity, which is going to be built on the blockchain. We are working on it now. We are halfway through, and uh, of course, financial inclusion. We are talking about more importantly a sustainable uh, project which can give some sort of benefit to the Rohingya community worldwide, so that they can be included in, in, in a different way uh, in, uh, and social upliftment. So, if we can go to the next one, uh, blockchain is basically a technology uh, which is uh, been uh, around only about 10 to 15 years. One of the uh, uh, product of is, is, is cryptocurrency 
And uh, so the blockchain is an underlying technology uh, which is chained each block. It's been cryptographically hashed. And it has a, basically is a trustee without a, without a trustee, is a trusted system without a trustee. That's what it is. Uh, I would like to go to the uh, next one. We can, we can do so. So uh, currently we have been, uh, we launched this uh, token system in Malaysia. So this is called the R token. What it does is a social incentive. Anybody who, who, is, uh, who helps uh, community, doing some community work, school, uh, maybe teaching, tutoring, any kind of this so they can earn some token which is cryptographically there. One hour equal to one token. If they have 20 hours of token, they can exchange for a healthcare for one year. So we talked about, we talked to our partners. So the, the, the initial stage of the social ecosystem to bring more partners and give it more services using this digital identity, like healthcare, maybe uh, transferring of uh, funds from one place to another, and etc. So maybe we can go to the next one. Yeah. So basically, uh, uh, this is what eventually we are trying to do, unlocking the potentials. Uh, starting uh, to have to have some sort of remittances, microfinancing, giving loan to the Rohingya community worldwide to do some sort of small business and so on. Uh, before I finish this, I was going to take only one minute, if, if I may. Yes, I think we are done here. Uh, this is not about presenting a project. This is not about, uh, you know, telling how uh, devastating the situation is. According to the, not only UN, according to our sources, only from 2017 all the way to 2019, 28,000 women were raped. I'm talking about a real life situation here. 32,000 children were thrown to the fire. My brothers and sisters, and gang raped, and land has been taken. Many other issues has been we have been facing from from generation to generation. If I start my story of my parents, which is uh, migrating from Burma all the way to the Middle East, they literally walk all the way. We call journey on foot. It took them two years to reach from devastating situation. And we have basically nothing. There is no infrastructure. There is uh, nothing left for the Rohingya to be built. Unfortunately, this is one of the solutions we came up with as a Rohingya. So we need uh, uh, we need global global support. We need as many people as uh, we can to help us on this project to uplift the Rohingya for a better solution rather than lobbying. Of course, there are many other uh, other things that is going on which is uh, like International Criminal of Justice, International Criminal Court, and all this. So this is also part of that solution that we are trying to present here today. Because you have any questions, any other uh, ways uh, to move forward. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much.